Hello guys, Genuine here from Genuine Gaming, and here is a video of my top 8 class dips for Baldur's Gate 3. But before anything else, some of you might ask what is a class dip or level dip. A class dip or level dip is taking a few levels in another class to optimize or add flavor to your character build. Now I said a few a while ago as to how many levels is a dip level is debatable. Some would say up to 2 levels is a level dip. Others would say 5 levels is a level dip. But for me, I would say 2 levels and you can extend it up to 3 levels. Anything more than that is already called multi-classing, especially in Baldur's Grade 3 because it is capped at level 12. Generally, I would suggest to level up your main class up to level 5 before going into another class dip. My two main criteria for this ranked level dip in Baldur's Gate 3 are the power that it can give your character and how it is applicable to any kind of build. A dip can turn out to be powerful to a specific kind of build will rank lower than a dip that adds a moderate boost to several kinds of build. Now let us go to my top 8 level dips. Number 8. Two levels of Bard. Bardic Inspiration is a powerful ally booster. The Bard uses his bonus action on his turn to choose one ally or creature to gain one Bardic Inspiration die a d6. Once within the next 10 minutes, the creature can roll that die and add the number rolled to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw it makes. Once it is used, it is lost. A creature can have one Bardic Inspiration die at a time. At second level, the bard gains Song of Rest. At the end of the short rest, each of your companions gain an extra 1d6 hit points. He also gains Jack of All Trades, wherein he can add half of his proficiency bonus, rounded down to any ability check you make that doesn't already include his proficiency bonus. This dip may not give you much of anything in combat except for bardic inspiration. What it gives you are good quality of life feature in your party. Number 7, 2 levels of rogue. This class dip is a way of building a run and gun type of character and gain additional damage through sneak attack. It is not a powerful dip, but if you know how to play tactically with run in and gun in, this is the build to go. A level 1 dip in rogue gives you expertise and sneak attack. Expertise is giving you another proficiency that you are very good at since your proficiency bonus is doubled for any ability to check you make with that skill. Sneak attack allows you to deal an extra 1d6 damage. Once per turn to one creature, you hit that you have an advantage or is flanked by an ally. At level 2, you gain cunning action. You can use your bonus action to dash, disengage, or hide. This is the ability you need for running and gunning. Number 6. Two levels of Druid Circle of the Moon. There are two ways we can look at this build. One is to access a good Druid cantrip called Shalala. This cantrip imbues your staff or club with nature's power. It becomes magical as it deals 1d8 plus wisdom bludgeoning damage and you use your spell casting ability for attack rolls. However, if you are only after this cantrip, I would just suggest getting a magic initiate feat and choose a druid wherein you learn two cantrips of your choice from that class spell list. In addition, you can choose one first level spell from the druid spell list. The other way is to add a bit of flavor to your build by being able to use wild shape and transform into a badger, a cat, a spider, a wolf, or a bear. This is favorable for builds not meant for melee combat as wild shape will enable your character to be efficient at melee by transforming into a bear or a wolf. And this is a reason for choosing Circle of the Moon for your Druid Circle as it will allow you to access combat wild shape. This will allow you to use your wild shape as a bonus action rather than as an action. Additionally, while you are transformed by wild shape, you can use a bonus action to expend one spell slot to regain 1d8 hit points per level of the spell slot expended. Number 5. 2 to 3 levels of Monk Way of the Open Hand. Dipping into 2 levels of Monk is good for characters high on both dexterity and wisdom. At level 1, you gain 2 nice features of a Monk class an armor defense, and martial arts. A normal defense will make your class armor equal to 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your wisdom modifier if you are not wearing armor or not holding a shield. The martial arts will allow you to use an arm strikes and monk weapons which are short swords and any simple melee weapons that don't have the two-handed or heavy property 
and use dexterity instead of strength for the attack and damage rolls. You can also make use of your bonus action for additional and arm strike if you use your attack action with an arm strike or a monk weapon on your turn. For example, if you use your attack action by using a quarter staff to attack an enemy, you can also make an unarmed strike as a bonus action. At level 2, you gain 2 key points, which you can use to make Flurry of Blows, Patient Defense, and Step of the Wind. I'm not sure how Patient Defense and Step of the Wind is applied in the game, but I am sure that Flurry of Blows is in the game because we saw it in action in the past panel of From Hell. Flurry of Blows allows you to make two unarmed strikes instead of one on your bonus action by spending one key point. If you still have an extra level to spend for Monk, you gain a cool ability called Deflect Missiles, which was also featured in the last panel from Hell. This will allow the Monk, by using his reaction, to deflect or catch the missile while he is hit by a ranged weapon attack. When he does so, the damage from the attack is reduced by 1d10, plus your dexterity modifier, plus your monk level. If you reduce the damage to zero, you can catch the missile and can spend one key point to make a ranged attack with the missile just caught as part of the same reaction. Number 4. Barbarian 2-3 Wild Heart Most people dip into a barbarian because of their rage feature. This may not be good for a spellcaster as they cannot cast a spell while raging. However, Strength Melee build can gain a lot with just one ability as Rage would grant them an advantage on Strength checks and Strength saving throws. And as you make a melee weapon attack using Strength, you gain plus 2 to the damage roll. You also have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. That would mean that while raging, when the Barbarian gets hit with a bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, the damage inflicted to him is half. This resistance is improved when you dip to level 3 and choose the Wild Heart subclass and choose Bear as your Bestial Heart. The Barbarian gains resistance to all damage types except Psychic Damage. Number 3. Two Levels of Cleric Tempest or War Domain First level Cleric domains open up a lot of options. Tempest and War Domain are a few ways to get a Heavy Armor proficiency with a level dip. At the same time, both of these domains also offer martial weapons proficiency. Combining these things with the wizard or a sorcerer would make for a good battle mage build. You will be wearing heavy armor and wielding a martial weapon. Although you may lose learning high level spells, but you do not lose your spell slots. At first level, a Tempest Domain Cleric gains Wrath of the Storm, a powerful ability wherein the cleric can use his reaction to creatures within 5 feet of him to cause the creature to make a dexterity saving throw. The creature takes 2d8 lightning or thunder damage on a failed saving throw and half as much damage on a successful one. You can use this feature several times equal to your wisdom modifier. A war domain cleric at worst level gain war priest feature while a cleric uses his attack action can make one more weapon attack as a bonus action at second level, clerics gain channel divinity. A tempest cleric gains destructive wrath. When you roll a lightning or thunder damage, you can use your channel divinity to deal maximum damage instead of rolling. This ability is very powerful combined with a sorcerer or wizard spell that can deal such kind of damage. A war cleric gains guided strike. When you make an attack roll, you can use your channel divinity to gain a plus 10 bonus to the roll. As you can see, a lot of powerful features are gained by just dipping to two levels of cleric. Number two, two to three levels of warlock. Dipping into a warlock class is beneficial for a charisma build character like sorcerers, bards, and paladins. Level one warlock would give you access to a powerful cantrip called Eldritch Blast. This will allow you to conjure a beam of crackling energy dealing 1d10 force damage to your enemies. As I mentioned before, this is beneficial for a charisma build character as this uses an attack roll to hit your enemy and is affected by charisma modifier. At level, the warlock will be able to gain Eldritch Incantations of which you boost this cantrip by using Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast. Agonizing Blast will allow you to add your Charisma modifier to the damage it deals. And Repelling Blast, when your Eldritch Blast hits an enemy, you can push the creature up to 4.5 meters away from you. If you have an extra level to spare, you can dip up to level 3. At third level, Warlocks has the option to take Pact of the Blade wherein you can use a packed weapon. 
This weapon counts as magical for the purpose of overcoming resistance and immunity to non-magical attacks and damage. If I'm not mistaken, you are also going to use your charisma modifier for your attack rolls when using this weapon. Number 1. Fire 2 Dipping into two levels of fighter would boost any kind of build. I do not see a possible mistake when you dip two levels of fighter in Baldur's Gate 3. You would miss one ability score improvement at level 12, but you gain more than that because of Action Surge. Action Surge is a level 2 ability of a fighter which allows the fighter to take additional action on top of your regular action. And what I like about this ability is that it gets replenished after a short rest. Try to imagine a wizard who can cast Fireball twice in a round because of Action Surge. What destruction he could make in a round. I would describe Action Surge as a one-round haste spell without increasing your movement. Aside from Action Surge, dipping into the fighter would also give you an additional to a fighting style and Second Wind. Second Wind is an ability that allows the fighter to use a bonus action to regain hit points equal to 1d10 plus fighter level once every short rest. Those are my top 8 class dips in Baldur's Gate 3. I would love to hear how you would want to build your character in Baldur's Gate 3. Do not forget to leave a like if this video is helpful. And for more Baldur's Gate 3 videos, subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Ciao!